Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, sometimes when I sit up here, I mean, most of you who watch the show have seen a lot of shows and know we've done a lot of shows. I mean, we talk about it sometimes. But really, we've been doing these shows for like 15 years, and this is probably a show in the middle 250s. So, I mean, we've really done this before, and a lot of the crew is the same, and there's a real commitment to, to coming and being together. And yet sometimes, you know, I'm sitting up here, and I know this is a talk show, and I know that this is the opening, and <laughs> you're coming on to the thing after the, the opening video and the opening credits. And yet there's really nothing to say. You know, so much has been said throughout the years, so much has been said by people who could speak in, in, in poetry and Rumi and, and Krishna and Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad and Moses and just healers and psychics and masters and mystics and shamans have spoken about love and unconditional love and how we are all connected and how we are all one. And this has gone on and on and on and on. And now is the time where for really, if not all of us on this planet, most of us who are in human body now, who are alive now, have a real opportunity to know that experience, to come fully into the recognition that these true masters, that these true saints, that these true mystics, true mystics, true masters, have experienced and have known and have said, please, that is the purpose of your human life. That is why you're on this planet. And have given you know, different techniques and different tools and different potentials for us to know that. But just to implant the seed that the Father and I are one, the Goddess and I are one, there is a oneness. There is an experience in the human body of the infinite that is fully inclusive. So that experience brings everybody and everything into a oneness, a collectiveness, a collaborativeness. And that's what we're here to do. And that's what every bridging show is about. Through whatever technique or tool or spoke on the wheel, we bring to this show or the guests or the videos of the art project, the intention from the very beginning has been dedicated to the oneness. And there is an experience of the oneness. Know that there is an experience of the oneness, and that will change everything. So, you know, just join us. Join us in that experience, that quest, that knowing, that realization, that enlivening, that furthering into that love, because ultimately that oneness in a human body feels like love and feels like unconditional love. And that is what the human being is here to do. That's what this planet Earth is for. And now is the time. So as normally, we have a guest whose life is dedicated to that. Sheila Z. Sterling is a spiritual teacher. She's an author. And she had a traumatic reawakening, reacquainting. She had a horrible auto accident and led her to recommit herself to love, to serve, to heal, to heal herself and to heal others, to learn methods, to learn techniques, to experience so much that she could come forth and say, I can help in this healing and this harmonizing. And she's the creator of Soul Sonics, which is an amazing new sound healing modality. And as we've talked about so many times before, this is the time for new paradigms and new modalities and new healings. I mean, in a way, they're old because everything is one and all the techniques and tools, but they're coming around again. They're coming around in a different way. They're coming around for us to heal us, to heal the heart of this planet and how fortunate we are. And, you know, as most of you know, we usually show music videos and, and you 
tonight is a great honor for anybody. We have two extraordinary music videos from a, a former guest on Bridging. It was one of the most beautiful voices and the most beautiful intentions. Cecilia is just, most of you know of her through a lot of different ways, but Cecilia, we have two music videos, When You Wish Upon a Star and Ave Maria. So beautiful, so well done, such an intention of sharing, of giving, of serving. And again, you know, for people who've watched before, we're also part of this extraordinary international healing art project. It came as a vision, it came as a dream to reach out to the world and say we as part of a healing of the planet, as part of a, an acupuncture, as part of a healing of the heart of the planet, let's all come together, bring our creativity, bring our love, and create a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth, and send it to us here, and we will put it on the show. We will have an extraordinarily beautiful uh, website that a great friend of Bridging, George Graves, designed, beautifully done, just really spectacular. And we have over 250 pieces that have already come in and probably another 300 to 500 people who have committed to doing a piece, but they haven't gotten to it yet. So new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth as a healing, as the intention to be part of a healing, a creativity, an acupuncture for the planet. And anybody is welcome. There's no, it could be any format, any size, uh, anything, any age, any skill level. And we've had people from 3 to 93 put in pieces, some famous, world-famous artists and someone who never picked up anything but a Sharpie marker and, and wanted to do something. And two of the pieces we're showing tonight, Sheila did, just two beautiful pieces directly from her heart to serve the love, to serve that international healing art project. So we really have so much available in the next 15 minutes or so. And it's here, and, and we're all here together. If you're watching this, we're here together to serve and to learn to serve and to love and to learn to love. And that's it. <laughs> so join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first Cecilia video, and then Sheila will be with us. So join me. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we're going to start tonight's show with the Cecilia music video, Settle In. She's so beautiful. Sheila's so beautiful. The art, the music, the intention. When you wish upon a star, enjoy. <laughs> Have a 
Ja, da gjenstår det bare å takke for oss her fra Gjøvik Fjelland. Ha fortsatt en hyggelig lørdagskveld, og husk på søndagsprogrammet i morgen klokka halv to på samme kanal. Takk for oss! Hi everybody, welcome back. So the, the piece you're seeing in between Sheila and I is a piece Sheila did called Earth Guardian. It's an incredible piece, as you can see, uh, beautiful. But also I just want to thank Cecilia for sending that beautiful video, and we'll show another one later on. So Sheila, when you did this, why don't you describe what you know how it went for you to do that piece for the art project? Well, um, it was a Sunday, and I haven't actually put a pencil or a brush to paper in quite some time. And I came home, and of course I'm an advocate and lover of Mother Earth and protector of Mother Earth, and I just grabbed paper and said, I just, I have to do this. I just started doing the piece. Wow. And what it represents is, this is representative of the Earth, of course, and then this is the color uh, pink of the heart chakra with the hearts and the flow. And then this is representative of the angel wings and the light coming through and protecting and this is the life flow so it was it's like this is guarding love and universal love is guarding the earth the heart and the heart of every single person and how we behave and how we treat our precious mother earth that's how it came wow, out that's beautiful you really Thank can you. feel that when it first came in that was really what we felt so why don't you talk about like you talk about like a main part or, or a real crucial point for you was when you had that accident and it just kind of was so traumatic that it really shook up the thing. Why don't you talk a little about that? Well, for most people, as we're growing up, I know when I was 14 I had an encounter with angels and I know growing up a lot of people have encounters and we tend to push them aside. Oh, we don't want to be different and what what are usually gifts and wonderful insights that everybody is given from the universe and from spirit, we, it tends to make us feel isolated. So we tend to move away from that as we're growing up. And so I was given a few warnings through my lifetime. But uh, in 99, uh, and I've had near-death experiences two other times, but in 99, I was uh, hit really bad, a car accident, but I like to, people say, well, gee, that happened to you, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, what if it didn't happen to me, but it happened for me? Because in that awakening, I really learned in that time what it was to be grateful with every fiber of my being to be invited to the banquet that we call life. And as I came to, because I was knocked out, and as I was awakening, I, I was being spoken to very sternly that now I have a choice, either to step into who I was sent here to be and help with the uh, evolution of the species, because it has to happen, the race is on, or I could go. And 
of course, being a mother and a grandmother, I chose to stay. And so it really awoken me. Uh, little did I know that it would take me probably close to three years to be able, I had head trauma injuries, of course, you know, and a lot of other injuries, but to be able to really begin to communicate. But in that time, I was really being honed. Uh, I'm a conscious channel. I really, uh, I'm an energy healer, you know, and I see energies, and it really opened me up to what had to be, to what had to come. So when people say, gee, it's awful, I'm like, no, 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 it was wonderful. I mean, it was a catalyst. So I, I look at it as something that happened for me, not to me. And how did you proceed after that period? And how, how did you start coming out and start more fulfilling your destiny? And what clearly you would agree to, like, yes, I have to do this now? Well, what happened during my recovery period, which was sort of in and out with a number of years, a lot of things started happening. I started, of course, hearing sounds, music. Uh, I used to say I was visited often by angels because with head trauma, a lot of people don't realize how many people have fallen off a bike. Everybody, we all fall off bikes. We hit our heads, we do this. And what, what a lot of people don't realize is that every time you do that, it puts a trauma on the cells of the body. And because we're holographic, it affects all 100 trillion cells, which affects the perception. So uh, at, when you're hit like that, as you're coming out of it, for me, I was given a lot of information. A lot of different things came through, both in sounds, in words, realization, really realizations of what had to transpire. It was like I was given a glimpse of the perspective from the universe. And so it changed everything for me. And for a long time, uh, I really couldn't communicate it very well. Uh, but, but I knew I was now part of it, and in a big way. So I learned to not fight it and to just flow with it. And my life was changed, uh, and I had to do what I promise. That was my promise for staying here, was to step into those shoes. And I've kept my promise every day, and I'm grateful every single day. And so when you started doing that, did you, did you start writing a book? Did you start doing workshops? Did you, how, did, how did you begin to, to really you know, let that out and manifest it? Well, after I pulled myself off the floor. <laughs> yeah, that would be a start. <laughs> that would be a start. And I uh, was able to get out of bed. Uh, like a number of things happened. The first thing that channeled through me was the sounds of the soul, which, of course, is the basis for soul sonics. And it was, uh, I thought it was for me. I thought, oh, great, because obviously I began to get into healing modalities. I started studying everything, uh, acutonics. I'm an acutonics practitioner, sound and light therapy, because we are sound and vibration. I started studying holodynamic and the theories of the quantum physics and how it relates to us as humans and what does it mean, because we are bridging heaven and earth. We are the conduit that is bridging heaven and earth. And I didn't really know how to get that across. When the music came through, it, it became so loud. I carried it for almost probably three to four months until you would speak to me, and I could see kind of letters falling out of your mouth, but I couldn't make out what they were, and I couldn't. all I could hear was this music. And so I went to a friend in San Diego. I said, I'm in trouble. I, something's happening here. And he said, well, come on down. Let's see what we can do. And what it was, it was a, a gift from the angels, really a gift from the angels. It's a nine-minute channel, and it's really a prayer. And so many people worldwide have experienced incredible healing from it. So I was just grateful. I noticed when I was when we were downloading it, because we did it note by note, and then I still had something in my head. It was still there. So they said, put these on, go in that room, we're going to just loop this music, and whatever comes out, just let it come out. Right. And so with Sounds of the Soul, that's what came out. But I noticed that as I was doing that, it was leaving my body in a great way. I became detached from it, but still part of it. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that the channels that were coming through me weren't meant for me at all. Right. But for yeah, me, you for, were a vehicle. Yeah, for just a vehicle. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you know. And then uh, that was, and the next one that came through was reading the language of the cosmos. And that, I was just going to dinner. I was on my way to dinner, and it was like a hand reached out and pushed me and said, wait a minute, we have something to say. And I, I just sat back in a chair and went, oh, no. And it was like the roof opened up, and all of this energy started coming in. And it was what it was saying to me is, there is no empty space. What if we look at this as empty air and space? But what if this was waves and waves of energy meant for all of humanity uh, for their evolution? It's like a code, a language. And I kept saying, I, I don't understand it. I can't, I can't read it. And that, I was given the name of the book, Reading the Language of the Cosmos. And so it is a, it's a yearly uh, kind of an almanac, but it has a daily thing, like every uh, 40 to 50 hours, as, as we are shifting, as we're going around the planets, the energy changes. So not many people realize how affected we are. The moon affects the tides. We're 70% water. It affects every single one of us on the planet. So if you have a heads up, knowing that we're going into the sign of cancer, uh, that usually will bring on, I always get phone calls, people say, I don't know what to do, I can't get out of bed, I, I feel so forlorn, nobody loves me, I'm like, hang on, first of all, know that it's going to pass, and know, so if you have a heads up, you can plan ahead, have lunch with friends, don't be alone, because within two days, the energy of Leo is going to come in, and all of a sudden you're going to feel strong and like you're just beaming the light. And you, you look back and you go, what, what happened? And so it's, it's a way that people can decipher through their daily life how to flow with the universal energies rather than swimming upstream. So, <laughs> that was, yeah. And so they're so different. They're kind of eclectic. People say, but you're, you're a healer. What are you writing books about the universe because it's all connected right what's what's not part of it yeah it's all it's all one and so everything sometimes it seems a little scattered because i get this information and i just i just put out what comes through me because it's meant to be shared and it they're all parts and pieces of a great puzzle and we're all we're all sort of living in that and it's it's such an exciting time and I know right now a lot of people are really worried and a lot of people are allowing fear to come in because of things that are happening. Again, they say, how could this, what's happening to me? And it's like, no, no, wait a minute. Is it happening to you or is it happening for you? Because when, when you're ready to come up in higher vibration, a catalyst will appear. And if you allow it and you see it as such, it will shift you rather than staying down down here in the vibration saying, what am I going to do? I'm buying into the fear. So it, it all fits together. <laughs> and, and you used to travel a lot and do a lot of workshops all over. And, and, and in that, have you seen the progression that people are more open to it and more available to, to, to you know, sound healing and, you know, uh, you know, all the ideas that are flowing through you? Exponentially, exponentially. Um, Right now, we are experiencing such an awakening. A lot of people who are losing positions that they thought was their job, but maybe their job, but not their purpose. So people are having to really go inside and re-examine what is going on. What am I going to do? And a lot of people are beginning to ask the question, what am I here to do? So it makes a tremendous difference. And I think that it all sort of fits together with what's happening in the planet because the race is on, and we don't know just a look or a glance or hello, how are you, or just by the energy you carry, you can light the, ignite the fire in somebody else. It's like I kind of picture it as beautiful radiance just all over the globe, and one person kind of tapping the other with a magic wand of awakening, and it's happening all over. Yeah, we were talking, you know, earlier when we were waiting with everybody was setting up that uh, people all over the planet are just having these unbelievable experiences at, you know, seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah. And, and just, you know, we get books and tapes and CDs every week from all over, and, and we've never heard of these people. We've never heard of their organizations that are huge. It's like, how is this yeah. possible? <laughs> 
it, it's it's amazing, you know, because we are all we're all masters and we're all students. And so a lot of people are really beginning to get it that we are all one, and it's all part of the same thing. And we're it's kind of a hundred monkeys series. It's it's the tipping point. We're really at a tipping point where it comes to the the evolution of the species, and I believe the future of our planet. And so we have to do, we have to take responsibility and do what's necessary to stand up and be the incredible beings that we are. And so <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And so are you still getting information like on a daily or weekly basis? Um, yes, I am. I I'm kind of, I'm backed up, I have all this stuff, so sometimes I don't really blog it, but I have to say, I love you, I honor you, and I have to set you right here for a moment, because uh, it's very easy for me to get scattered. Uh, I, I don't mind it, but other people seem to mind it, <laughs> so I try to stay a little bit focused on one project. It, but it seems that when things come through, reading Language of the Cosmos, I sat down and wrote that in one sitting. I don't know if I slept for three or four days, but it was coming in so fast. I just sat down at my computer and began to type. And now it's become a yearly, a yearly book. And um, the information that I received on cellular, cellular memory and the key to unlocking how people can get to the seed of what it is that holds them back, that that's really a huge project. I have a book called Intentional Wellness that kind of explains it. The The wellness code is the seven-hour intensive that I do, but so much, it's just at the tip. Uh, I find that a lot of people, they get it, they understand it, but it's something that actually physically happens to you when you experience it. And that is right now my main goal is to help and share with as many people as possible because once you have that piece of information is you, it a piece of information or is it an experience it's both it's both it's it's a a piece of information that is an experience and so it's kind of a it's a pathway really it's a pathway of how to be able to go in and call in that which is um let's say possibly been holding a block that you may not even know because so much uh, is subconscious and the subconscious is running the boat so although we may all say everyone wants to be healthy and wealthy and wise but sometimes the subconscious sits back there like this and says we kind of like the status quo you yeah know? we're familiar with yeah. it at least very familiar. Mm. So how do you exchange that? How do you, when something comes into your life as a catalyst, it's how do you recognize when it's a catalyst and, and when it's not? How do and you, also, how, how can we do it so it's not so traumatic that we don't get, you know, head trauma for three or five or ten years? And You know, how can yeah. we do it so there's a subtlety involved? Yeah, exactly. I, someone said, well, well, you came by it easily because I said, look, you don't have to die to do this. Yeah, right. It would be better for you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Everybody, everyone is capable. We have the most highly sophisticated computer, and every single person has one, and it sits right between our shoulders. Mostly and idle. <laughs> well, Hopefully not on plug, uh, but idle. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't they say we use like 3% of our yeah, brain? Exactly. The geniuses use 3%. 3%. Right. So it's time, and a lot of people are having experiences where more is being kicked in. And, you know, so you see subtle energies, you begin. It's, it's not all that easy sometimes because to stay focused and to stay in the here and the now and know that this is where you need to stay grounded so that you can share it. But it's uh, it's an amazing it's an amazing thing, and I it's the piece of the puzzle is that every single person has what I like to, I call it trauma, but it's not you know people say well I didn't I've never had any trauma in my life and I say yeah. have you been born <laughs> right what life is that <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. but even a birthing the birthing experience uh, people don't realize but to be birthed you go through a death and rebirth experience because you're in a water environment for nine months and that's why you have labor because the child will fight to stay in 
And as so what happens is is it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and and the child has to be able to take that first breath. We're one of the only species, us and frogs, that actually change our what we if we go from water breathers to air breathers. Makes us very special. Yeah, really. All right, so maybe what we'll do now, we'll talk a little more about this later, how special we are. And we are, amazingly. But we'll have the second uh, Cecilia video. It's Ave Maria. Cecilia is one of the most beautiful beings and the most beautiful singers. Ave Maria, enjoy. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So Ave Maria Cecilia, <laughs> really very beautiful. And the picture you're seeing in between uh, Sheila and I is another piece that Sheila did called Wonder. Why don't you talk a little about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, people say, what, what is Wonder? Uh, this, they're representative, obviously, of two life forces, obviously very different in color, very different in stature. But it's, I got the feeling when I started drawing it 
that they were drawn to each other, and yet in, in a state of wonder, like, oh, look at you, you're so different, and look at you, you're so different, but we're both the same. And wow. so that's why I, ca I called it wonder. It's, wow. uh, I don't know, for me, I can, I can feel the love between these two. Wow. Wow, <laughs> different, but, but wow, one. But one, wow, that's beautiful. So we were talking earlier about you know, healing and, and hands-on healing and meditations and things like that. Um, and you were saying that you could do, you know, a, a meditation and a healing and a grounding that everyone can experience. Like a, a, yes, yeah. if you'd like to take a few minutes and do that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, why don't you do that? Why don't you just look at that camera okay. and just talk to the audience and, okay. you know, do whatever. Come, yeah. I will say that uh, usually we're playing sounds of the soul, which the vibratory rate of that has been tested and shown to move matter. However, if you'd like to take a nice deep breath, breathe in and exhale, close your eyes and take a couple of nice big breaths in and release. And as you're breathing in, feel the air filling every cell of the body. Feel it filling, filling, filling. And as we release, we release that which no longer serves. Just the fact of a breathing in, feel how every cell takes it in. What a wonder that is. Feel how it's transformed as we exhale that which no longer serves us. Breathe in and allow your body to feel the fullness of this healing energy as it comes in to every part and every cell of your body. Breathing in, you can feel the vibration of your body rising. You feel this beautiful cloud-like healing energy surrounding and caressing every cell as it comes up. Breathing in and releasing. Take a moment and feel what that feels like. And as you breathe in and we feel this beautiful healing energy swirling around, we also feel it going down, down the body until it gets to the bottom of the feet where it continues on down into Mother Earth and grows great roots grabbing on to the boulders deep within Mother Earth, grounding us and centering us, really putting us in sync with Mother Earth. And breathe in and release, allowing that energy to come back up through the body, up through the chakra systems, up through the throat, up into the head and the crown and beyond, and back down again. Breathe in. Feel if your hands are tingling. That's just fine if they are. Breathe in and feel the vibration raising. Take a moment. And as you breathe in and release, now every breath brings you more to the here and the now, brings you closer to the here and the now. And as we breathe in, in the next couple of breaths, take a great big breath and release it with a sigh. <sighs> and as you do that, open your eyes and welcome back. It's just a short grounding meditation. And it's very powerful. And uh, I don't know if everybody could hear, but somebody was coughing. And what that is representative of sometimes when we do this and we bring the energy, we awaken the energy centers, if there's something that a person is holding in, not saying, or something about that's going on in their life, that they're not speaking their truth, it will cause you to choke right there and begin to cough. Wow. So oftentimes if that happens, people think, oh, you're disrupting. It's not disrupting. It's their body making way and releasing that energy. So welcome that cough. Wow. 
wanted to point that out since somebody coughed. <laughs> yeah, I ran out of the room. I heard I scurrying. Of room. <laughs> <laughs> I had my eyes shut, but I didn't, you, know, you could hear the, the progression of the cough happening and releasing. So in the information or the vibration you're getting now, I mean, what is, like, you know, we use words when there are no words, and really we're talking about, you know, a vibration of love and a vibration of oneness. But if you could put into words, what's the latest information that you're a vehicle for, you know, letting out to the world, what would that be? It would be that every breath we take is sacred. Our symbiotic relationship with Mother Earth, with the plants, the water that is the flow of life, the sun and the, the warmth that is our transition, every breath that we breathe is bringing us all closer to oneness and closer to the way things from a universal perspective are meant to be. Everything is meant for our oneness and our growth and our evolution. And we're, we're, we're growing up. We're becoming more mature spiritual beings. And if we allow that to happen, the most marvelous and miraculous things are happening for each and every one of us. And I'm, I'm so grateful just to be a vehicle. And I know that every person themselves is also a vehicle. So look within because it's all within. And... and if people are watching the show and going, you know, it seems like what Sheila's saying is moving me, and I'm really enlivened by it, and I really feel connected to it. But somehow, in my normal day-to-day -day life, I, I, I haven't been experiencing it. What, you know, tools or advice or methods would you have for people to come more and more in tune with that? Make the time. If it's a moment in time, or if it's a minute or two minutes before you put your feet on the floor, Say thank you. Say how grateful you are for the perfect health and wellness that you feel, for the abundance that you feel, for the connection to all that is. And fake it till you make it. Sometimes people say, they say, well, I don't really feel that way. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Feel it because as you do it, the vibration will be lifted. There's always something to be grateful absolutely, for. Absolutely, absolutely. And every day, if you carry that feeling of gratefulness, pretty soon that gratefulness turns to joy. And where there's joy, there is no fear. The, the vibration of being grateful is one of the highest vibratory rates you can, you can have. And when you're being grateful and in that moment, it dispels all fear, all darkness. And, and that's we're shedding light on the little gray areas that are around. And it, it'll illuminate the earth, and that's what we're all doing. We're all, every single person's part of it. Whether you think you are or you think you're not. If you don't have it, you think, oh, I don't have time during the day. I'm working all day. Guess what? You're doing it. You're breathing. How are you greeting people? Somebody comes to you and you say, how are you doing today? You know, or you, you just, you look beautiful today. That spark that you share with another person, that moment, can uplift them, and then they'll take that beautiful gift and pass it on, and and that's what it's all about. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in some ways, you know, it's like treat others as you'd like to be treated. Is uh, you know, that's so. a very good saying. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad we thought of it this evening. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's just an exciting time to be on the planet, even with all that's going on, and because of all that's going on. If we look at things that they are catalysts, you know, people talk about symptoms, so they don't feel well, or you mentioned before some different diseases. These are all just symptoms. This is the body saying, look, I'm trying to call your attention to something, shed some light on it, and it will be dispelled. So it's just time we start paying attention and making room for that light and taking the time and making the time in our day regardless of how much in a hurry we are. It only and how takes much busyness we think yeah, we have going. Yeah, and love yourself because it, 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 it illuminates from within. And when you realize that you are, you are the reflection of the divine and you are carrying this light for the whole world, it, you can't help but feel that, that spark of joy. And it's catchy. It, it's really catchy. 
Yeah, we talk about it a lot is that, you know, it's like almost like the 100th monkey, like, and where it gets into the 89th monkey and certain, yeah. you know, external ma things manifest and, you know, so many people can come at that vibra vibratory level and all that. Yeah, it, it, it lifts it up. And I, I'm positive that when we do this and when people feel the experience of uh, a healing, or I like to say healing to wellness, uh, it, it works along the timeline. It works all the way back and all the way forward. You know, in the, in the quantum field is, is really the place where most healing takes place. And we're ready. Almost outside of time and space. It is. It's outside of time and space, yeah. That's the only way you can reach 100 trillion cells all at once. And we're ready. We're ready to step from healing to wellness. That's the pinnacle right now. And to oneness. From and wellness. to oneness. Wellness to oneness. I like that. Who said that? I'm not sure. <laughs> it wasn't Jesus, I don't think so. <laughs> he did do the other one, but I don't think he did this one. We'll take credit. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. I've never heard that actually before. So, okay. Have you? Wellness to one? We just said it. No, I know that. That I remember. <laughs> I hadn't heard it before. Though. I haven't heard it before either. Yeah, but somebody will take credit. But, you know, probably Al Gore. He did, <laughs> he did the internet and wellness to one. Uh, yeah, I mean, we see more and more of that too, is that people are coming into more harmony and more experience of that. You know, whether, you know, all of us can carry that with us, you know, 100% of the day every day is a little trickier, but, you know, more and more that the old paradigms just aren't working. Yeah, they're, they're, they're falling away. And the, the buzzword is acceptance. When you accept the fact that you are this magnificent being and you are perfect for who you are and where you're standing at that moment, with that acceptance really comes a great deal of information that you will be given about that. So it's, it, people say, well, I accept it. Again, accept it in your heart and all through the subconscious. Know with certainty that each and every one of us are the bridge between heaven and earth. And, and you do hands-on healings. When you do that, yes. uh, why don't you, you know, take us a little through that process, how you would do that. and Would it be different for every person? I'm sure it would to some yeah, extent. It's different. You... It's different for every person. I'm an intuitive healer. I have a lot of plaques. Uh, lymphology, kinesiology, sound vibration. I, I have a lot of training, but in the end, it's really the ability to step aside, be able to channel the energy and just step aside because it's ultimately what the person will allow. There have been miracles that have happened on my table. And people say, oh, thank you, you did that. No, no, no. No, I didn't. You know, I, I just learned to step aside and allow it and because you allowed it because something in you allowed yourself to be loved enough and felt that oneness enough it went all through your body and it cleared the trauma off of the cells so it's it's really an acceptance of being well of taking responsibility for your own wellness so Thank you for that. Yes, I am a hands-on healer. <laughs> and it's different for everybody. You know, I do a, a lot of different work. I do an acutonics practitioner. And I do use that sometimes. That's sound and vibration. And acutonics is a lot of people not familiar with it. Acutonics is, uh, yeah, I think some people aren't familiar with it. But acutonics is a, is a technique of sound and vibration. But it's done with tuning forks that are attuned to the planets. And it, you have to study acupuncture. It's just like acupuncture without the invasive, without the needles. It's done with sound and vibration. But it does the same thing. It clears all the meridian points. So you have to learn all the different meridians. But it's wonderful to do before, during, and then just after a treatment because you know the meridians are cleared. And it, it's a wonderful modality because you, you can feel it in your hands. Like if I, if I put them up, on, on you and you had a block, your body would suck the tone right out of that fork. So there's no two ways about it. You, you know, if you have a blockage, the, the body knows what it needs and it'll pull it in. And that's really the way I, I believe medicine is going. I, I, I think it's fabulous. I don't think it's going to be too long when they'll get the right vibratory rate. So if somebody has a challenge with a the kidney, they'll be able to dial 
you know, kidney vibratory rate, and you can place this on the area, and, and it will put itself back into balance. I think that's, that's what I'm hoping for. How about you? <laughs> you know, I know we can do it ourselves. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, you know, the tools are, are like almost a transition on the bridge. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it's, uh, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, I mean, we've talked about this a lot on the show, and we were talking about at the break about, you know, all these new paradigms. Yeah. And just, in a way, you know, making the old ones not workable, you know, not, and they haven't been workable, but now even more so, because there's an alternative. Yeah, it's, and it's really come to mind. Uh, the old paradigms, as they say, have been falling away, and people are saying, oh, it's like they've been falling away for a long time. Isn't this what we've all been waiting for? Isn't this what we've all been saying? The new paradigm, the new way, and now it's here, and, you know, it's like, okay, it's here. It's a birth process, and we are in the birth process. So meet it with great joy and embrace it. So... You bring up an interesting point because these are kind of tricky times where change is happening rapidly and energies are increasing. And, you know, there are a lot of things that people somehow were thinking that were important to them and leaning on, like jobs and money and <laughs> relationships and yeah. things like that that are kind of more breaking up and falling away. And fear is kind of, or has been, you know, kind of creeping up behind that. So, how do we deal with that as a species and individual? Well, as individuals and as a species, because what happens as individuals will happen to the collective, it's important to be able to sit. It's, it's difficult if you're in the moment. If you're, if you're being tossed and torn by the, by the storm, stop. The only way to stop is to stop. Take a breath and have the certainty in your heart that Everything is just as it's supposed to be. Everything is in this timing. And as you breathe that in and have I, faith, have certainty and the belief system that this is going to be for your highest good. Things don't always look at the moment that they're in your highest good. But I truly, truly believe that things happen for us. And that's on all counts. They happen for us as gifts, uh, not to us. And so it's just a regrouping, it's just a reorganization of our perspective, how we view it, because in the end, our life really is our perspective of life. So if we can shift our perspective to look at it from a little more of a universal view, it changes everything. It's like, well, isn't that interesting? Life should be a We're wiggle. separating ourselves yeah. a little from our situation. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, and life should be a wiggle, not a struggle. So we need to start wiggling a little bit and just being really, really grateful for every moment. You know, when things can't, when you think things can't get any worse, that's the moment you sit down and just start listing off, I'm grateful, I'm grateful for putting my feet on the earth, even if it's I'm grateful for the breath I'm breathing right in this moment. Because when you get yourself centered into that vibratory rate, it'll dispel the fear. It's like shining darkness. A light on darkness. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah, so yeah. that's beautiful. So let's shine a lot of light <laughs> on what, you know, less and less darkness, hopefully. So, again, you know, we're coming to the end of the show. If anybody wants any information on any of, Sh you know, Sheila's work, play, books, CDs, uh, sound healings, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. God bless you. Thank you.